Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll show you how to fully service um, each of your wheel hubs on a Mercedes uh, W220 S500. And this is really not very difficult at all given the right tools and I'll explain it a little bit now why you would want to replace a wheel um, wheel hubs bearings and races uh, there are two races inside a wheel hub an inner race and an outer race and two bearings corresponding bearings inner bearing and outer bearing and then a seal ring the seal ring is what the wheel speed sensor reads to measure the the rotational speed of each wheel uh, now um, I'm doing this as a maintenance item um, I suggest that you do it every 70 to 100,000 miles um, to restore the smooth ride of these cars uh, if you were to, and of course you could do it because your bearings have gone bad, and uh, that would be for a separate video, I guess, uh, to explain why a wheel bearing would go bad or what would be the symptoms or causes. But um, uh, you can research that on your own. But let's say that you have to replace the wheel hub, so you have choices. Either purchase the wheel hub um, for... Uh, I believe, and this is not something you wanna you wanna buy um, third party. You wanna buy it from Mercedes because you know this is a critical part. Uh, some parts it's okay to buy from um, third party vendors, uh, but uh, so each of those would cost you. Uh, I, I think nowadays about two hundred seventy two hundred eighty dollars uh, per wheel. Uh, so so total cost would easily run over $500. Now you can buy a set of, uh, I think, Pelican parts in the U.S. and Auto House AZ uh, sell these uh, bearing kits. Um, the kit contains um, the two races, the two bearings, and the uh, seal ring. For about 50 bucks. Um, this is as of March of 2021. Um, FCP Euro sometimes um, carries them too. Uh, so you can you can really for the price of that and eight dollars of the Mercedes um, grease, bearing grease. So that's about sixty dollars. Uh, you save a lot of money. You save two hundred dollars per side. Uh, now you need to have the right tools. Uh, uh, here I'm pressing the the caliper uh, pistons. Uh, so before you do that, I'm not showing this. Before you do this, uh, please make sure that you open the the brake fluid reservoirs cap, and then as soon as you've you're done pressing, close it. Uh, so air doesn't get more than uh, necessary into the reservoir. If you don't do that, you will have, potentially, uh, you could ruin your ABS system. Uh, anyway, so, um, and hang the caliper on the side with a coat hanger or some, some kind of uh, hook um, as you get to this part. Uh, so uh, there are some specialty tools that you need, and, um, and there are really four tools, uh, and I'll go through these. Uh, two of them you can rent, uh, uh, but actually you can borrow. So in the U.S., from um, AutoZone, AutoZone has a, a, a good bearing press set. It, it, it comes with uh, several pieces. Uh, different sizes uh, and the rod that you use to uh, uh, press in and out the bearings or the races, uh, I should say. Uh, 
uh, and and advanced um, advanced auto parts lends this tool uh, a, a job puller. I have that also in the beginning of the video. Uh, you pay a deposit of fifty sixty dollars and uh, you get to keep those tools for 90 days. If, if you don't return them in 90 days, the tools are yours. Um, however, if you do, your entire deposit is repaid. So essentially the tools are free. And, um, and they're really crucial for this job. Uh, some people suggest uh, uh, there are a couple of videos out there where people have used chisels and uh, flat-headed screwdrivers to hammer the bearings out, and that can be very difficult and frustrating, as you can see in those videos if you search for them. And it takes a very long time. The method I'm showing you will take very little time and you can be done with both sides within um, a couple of hours so um, and and uh, and so out of the four tools two of them you can you can borrow the other one is a shop press uh, again in the u.s uh, harbor freight the stores uh, sell these shop presses that are uh, very cheap compared to some other brand names uh, that Ten ton press will do this job just fine. I have the twenty ton press, as you'll see in a minute. I think I bought that for a hundred eighty dollars, but the ten ton press is uh, quite cheap, but uh, less than one hundred dollars or so. It's well worth the investment. It will pay for itself within um, one one um, wheels uh, bearing replacement. Um, uh, because if you if you were to buy the wheel hub, um, it would cost you two hundred seventy two hundred eighty dollars. But you can buy a shop press for a hundred dollars and and the bearing set and the grease for um, you know a hundred sixty a hundred seventy dollars and and save a hundred dollars uh, for the one wheel. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, it's crucial that you 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 buy a shop press or if you if you know a local mechanic that you can take the wheel hub to and they can for for a few bucks um, press the bearings uh, don't try to do it yourself unless you have a lot of time and you don't get frustrated and you're very patient and uh, so uh, just a warning now as you pull the hub out the outer race which is the smaller of the two races and it's called outer race because it's on the outside the inner race and the inner bearing um, on the inside so the outer bearing and outer race are on the outside the race comes out just like that it's not held by anything at this point uh, what holds it in place against the axle is the axle nut that we removed with an allen key um, of course, uh, I'm not showing you here, but you want to thoroughly clean not just the inside of the hub, but also the axle. Uh, that's the SKF set that I purchased with the seal ring and the grease. So then, then the inner bearing is hidden behind this uh, seal that uh, you need to hammer out or chisel out. And it comes out easily. And, and, and as you'll see in a second, the bearing is uh, the bearing falls out too but at this point everything is out short of uh, the two races and the next thing to tackle is the uh, outer race or the smaller of the two races because you have re room to go from the uh, 
larger diameter part of the hub in with uh, with this uh, small I think this is the smallest of the desks that comes in the AutoZone's uh, press kit and the rod you just press it out very easily it comes with a lot of different sizes so but two of them perfectly fit the races of these cars so now the the outer race is out and here I'm showing you the the old race that was taken out now the inner race it's a different story this you have to uh, you have to use this uh, job puller and I'm using a socket at the end of it the reason I'm using the socket is because as you turn the bolt uh, right and left uh, you just maneuver it such that it holds on to the one millimeter a little more or less of a space uh, on the inner race and the teeth of the jaw just hold on to the race and then you can once once you get it once you achieve that position then you turn the bolt further until it's really tight and I'll show you that in a second so you see the three jaws are um, held on to the um, to the little room that is there on the inner part of the race and then um, and then you just press against against that socket until um, it comes out. Uh, the next thing you want to do is to press the outer race in. Here what you need to remember is that the side that is um, a little thicker with the writing on it, that goes in. And the side that is thinner without writing, that just stays on the outside. And again, the reasoning is that the thicker part goes inside and creates this uh, protrusion against which you uh, your jaw pullers jaws or teeth hold on to when you try to press it out And um, and the smaller of the two um, races, or the other race, goes in next. You kind of evenly try to press it by hand. Again, with the writing side on the outside. Uh, sorry, on the inside and the side that doesn't have any writings on it the thinner side goes on the outside so the thicker side goes in the thinner side that stays out and then you find one of the discs i believe the smallest one fits perfectly with if you get the same tool that i did from uh, autozone fits perfectly inside of that to press it in.
and all of this as you can see uh, is taking very little time uh, a lot of this is real time I've done very little editing uh, some parts in order to keep the video brief I've taken out but uh, a lot of this I'm showing you in full sequence just so that you see everything step by step and also how long it takes it really takes very little time with the right tools if you don't have the right tools then of course you have to uh, you know you have to compromise and and uh, it will take you a very long time and it can be extremely frustrating so at this point both uh, both races are in and so uh, it's time to grease the inner or the um, larger of the two bearings and this is the best way that you can uh, grease a bearing uh, apply some uh, liberal amount of uh, grease on your on the palm of your hand and then press press each side of the bearing against the palm of your hand and as you press it the grease gets pressed pressured inside the cavities I'll show you here uh, exactly what I did and then the part I'm not showing you is that I've done the exact same thing here twice just to make sure that uh, it's well greased so that this bearing could last uh, another 70 100,000 miles easily And of course, if you know how to grease a bearing, then uh, please skip forward to the next step. And when you're done with the two sides, then you want to apply it all around the bearing as well. Now one of these uh, tubes of grease is more than sufficient, at least in my experience. I purchased two, but um, I didn't even have to open the, the second one. Uh, it's more than sufficient for both sides.
So once you have greased the inner bearing, again the larger bearing, uh, it only goes one way. You position it inside the larger uh, or the inner race. And then you place the seal ring on top of it and uh, by hand evenly press it against the hub and then use one of the discs to press it in. And so we are done with one side. This is the smaller bearing. This is the one that goes on the outside of the axle, outside of the hub. It's also called the outer bearing. This part, uh, of course, uh, if you enjoy uh, working on cars, uh, which if you've gotten to this point, you most likely do. It's very therapeutic. You don't have to replace the bearings and your rear wheels as frequently because those wheels don't turn. And the bearings are larger too. Uh, usually you'd want to replace those uh, probably every couple hundred thousand miles. Uh, 
with a brake parts cleaner clean the axle and uh, if you can see there right about two o'clock a little more there's the the round the the end of the the business end of the wheel speed sensor uh, you want to clean that too one of the one of the reasons if you ever get your EAS and BAS and um, ABS lights on uh, chances are I mean you would have to scan scan the car with a coat reader to see exactly but often um, more often than not if you get that then uh, chances are that uh, your speed sensor has gone bad uh, or you don't want to apply uh, leave any any grease by the way on the outside of the ring because you don't want to you don't want to you don't want any grease to hit the speed sensor you want to just apply some grease here on the axle too Uh, you'll get those uh, warnings also if your alignment is off. Um, sometimes when you replace the control arms, uh, thrust arms, um, the tie rods, you may get those uh, those three warnings also. And if your ABS goes bad, you'll get that warning as well. So now uh, you're getting to the end of this job. You press it with the inner bearing first, and uh, and then apply some more grease in those cavities. and put the outer bearing in So the fourth tool that you need comes into play now. This is the one where you measure the play of the wheel against the axle. And to do that, you have to tighten this little bolt that holds the dust to the wheel hub and um, so opposite that you you put in a bolt I, I don't have a short bolt so I'm using uh, compromising using uh, the round ends of three wrenches As, a, as a spacers and um, this is this is the other tool um, uh, the play the play that Mercedes Benz recommends uh, should be right around 0. 0.0005 inches
so I'm I'm just trying to show you here what it will look like when there is a lot of play. You want you want this to be about halfway between those each of the two markers inside the two markers about halfway. And so now just a little more and that should be it. It has a magnet on one side that by turning that knob it becomes magnetized. It's really not that expensive. Here you want to carefully tighten the axle um, nut using an Allen key. And then what I recommend is that uh, after you've tightened it, you use that measuring device again uh, just to make sure that you haven't moved the axle nut as you do this. And then you torque that whole bolt, and that's it. You mount your brake calipers and the tire, lower the car, remove the chocks, and um, you're done. I hope you found this use this video useful and. Um, Oh, and Mercedes recommends that you apply some grease inside of the dust cap also. And that's it. So, um, talk to you soon. Thank you.